Hi, welcome to the 24th episode of the New England Gown Knits podcast. I am Janet and I live in Massachusetts with my husband, our two boys, our cat, and our dog. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. You can find me on a Ravelry and Instagram at the New England Gal. Although it's been about two months since I've been on Ravelry, I'm definitely much more active on Instagram and I'm posting there at least every other day, it seems like. Everything else, every other type of social media, I have quite fallen off of the face of the earth. It's been two months since I podcast and I'm glad to be back. I haven't missed talking with all of you so much. I just don't know where the time went to. I think just with the beginning of school, in the new after school schedules and the days now being messed up between a soccer and piano and Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts. Everybody's going in different directions on different days. Plus I've started a new job so I'm trying to assimilate to that. So I'm so glad to be back and it's been a while and I am so sorry. With that being said, I'm looking in front of me and you would think not podcasting for two months I'd have quite a bit more than what I have completed. I've completely lost my sock knitting mojo. I have two pairs of socks that I had shared on my last podcast that I was almost done with and they still just need heels. I'm hoping this weekend is a long weekend. It's Columbus Day here in the United States so I do have Monday off from work. I'm hoping to get those heels done on those socks. That'll be nice. That is a goal. I did start knitting a pair of socks for um, bus stop knitting so I'll share those but my older son, he's 8th grade now, he doesn't want me out by the bus stop with him so he's been, now granted the bus stop is our driveway so he's been going out there alone and no longer welcome. I guess that's what you get for having a teenage boy. Wants well, nothing to do with me right now. Ah, growing pains. So I have a bit of knitting, a bit of sewing, and I decided to pick up <laughs> another hobby. I'm going to need to change the name of my podcast from the New England Gal Knits to the New England Gal Crafts because I just keep adding on to things to talk about with you guys, but I picked up cross stitching. I have no idea why. I've never cross stitched and all of a sudden I felt the sudden urge to start cross stitching. So I think, to be honest with you, it was Sue from the Legacy Fiber Arts podcast seeing some of her cross stitching. Yeah, I've fallen down that rabbit hole as well. So. Let me jump in and start sharing what I have done. So I do for knitting have two finished objects to share and the first one is I have finally finished my 10 year sweater by Caitlin Hunter from Boylan Knits and it took me long enough. It took me a lot longer than it should have but I am so pleased with the way it came out. Let me stand up. I am going to try and take a picture of myself in it after this to insert here. I'm by myself this weekend so I have to take it myself so we'll see how that goes. But I am so pleased with the way this came out and this is knit oops, out of yarn I had dyed and this is what I have left out of the three skeins of yarn. And this is uh, the base is a 55% merino 20% mohair, 25% nylon. I'm pretty sure those are the percentages. It would be nice. I didn't write anything down. So I'm going off of a memory. So I am sure there's a lot I've forgotten. So it's either 20% mohair or 20% nylon and then 25% mohair 25% nylon. I'll figure it out and I'll put it down below. But I'm very happy. I love the way it came out. This sleeve is just a tad bit longer than this one. This was the second sleeve I did. It has the same number of rows but for whatever reason my gauge loosened up on this sleeve. I don't think it's too noticeable. 
and when I wear it out, I will not point it out to anybody. Shouldn't have pointed it out to you guys. You guys probably wouldn't have noticed. But I am very happy and very pleased with the way it fits. I love everything about this and I would love to knit myself another one maybe next summer in a different, different yarn, try something different. And then for my second finished object, this this sweater flew off the needles. I started this sweater when I was visiting my brother in upstate New York. Let me, here's the back. Here it is, and I don't know, I probably won't all fit in the picture, but I'll put a picture of myself in wearing this. And this is the Tecumseh sweater by, again, Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knitworks. I'm I'm already planning on my second one. I'd like to do um, navy blue with gold star, uh, gold crosses, and then white feathers. So I haven't picked out what brand of yarn yet, but I, I, I enjoyed knitting this. This, this I have to say today is my favorite knit ever, and it fits beautifully in. I used a Madeline Tosh uh, Twisty K, which is a 100% merino. It's not superwash merino, so but it it is so soft. So the the uh, cream color with the purple specks is Good Silence. The green is evil eye and then the pink is barber deserved better and i have basically i have a whole skein of the pink left i think i want to do a brioche beanie in just this color if you guys know any uh brioche beanie patterns uh let me know because i'm on the lookout for that because i'm going to use I just think this would be the perfect hat, so I'm definitely going to use that for this. So this this will be my next project that I cast on once I'm done what I'm working on. Anyways, uh, that is it for my finished objects, and oh my god, I love this! It is so soft. This was such a fun knit. It flew. I started this Labor Day weekend, which is the first weekend in September. I started it up at my brother's house. I was finished within three weeks. I was a very, it is all I worked on um, for knitting. And I, I loved it. It's my first full color work sweater. I'm very happy with the way it came out. I like the floats. I think I did, here we go. I think I did pretty good with my floats for being a first time knitter. It was very slow going. I used one hand and I literally knit with one color, drop that color, knit with the next color, drop that color. But I liked the way the floats came out. I think my tension in my gauge was very good. I didn't swatch for this sweater. I know that's very bad but it came out perfect. I knit it in a size larger than I normally would and I just I love it and I can't wait to pick out the yarn and start on my next one. So that is it for my knitting finished objects. So let me start with the one little sock that I have been working on and this is being, I don't think I have the tag here, Modim is the yarn. It's a Portuguese yarn by Retrosario. And here's what I have, and I don't know the color because I don't have the tag, so I'll put it down below. But I am almost done with the leg of the sock and going to be starting on the ribbing pretty soon. Here it is. Let's get that out of the way. And I really enjoying knitting this. It is 100% wool. There is no nylon in it, but it's a nice, tough uh, wool. I think it's going to be perfect 
for the sock and a good wear. And it's going to be super warm in the winter time. So I'm pleased with the way this is coming out. I am knitting because I always have a ton of yarn left over. I'm going to do just a cream colored heel. So I'm going to knit these a little bit longer than I normally do just to have a nice longer leg for the winters. So this is what I've been working on at the bus stop with my younger son. So it is being knit a little more slow than my socks normally are because there's only one bus stop and I'm now working later so I don't get the kids off the bus so there's no afternoon bus stop knitting either. So it'll take a little longer uh, for me to get the socks done. So that's the only pair of socks I am working on right now. So for my last work in progress, I am working on the Camilla hat. Now I had even more leftover yarn from my Tecumseh sweater. So with the leftover, I had a whole skein of the Good Silence. And then I had half a skein of the Evil Eye. So I am knitting the Camilla you know, hat. And I am loving the way this came out. This is a brioche hat. I wanted to pick a, a pattern where I learned either a new technique or I did something that I was nervous to do. I wanted to teach myself something different. So I've always, when I've knit brioche, it has not included increases and decreases and it hadn't been a pattern. And I just, I fell in love. I thought with the green that the leaf motif would be perfect for this. Anyone who's nervous about doing something different or learning a new technique or feeling overwhelmed that you won't be able to accomplish something, do it. I was so nervous about doing a brioche pattern. I watched YouTube videos on the increase and the decrease for this particular pattern. It is so easy and I'm almost ashamed of myself on holding out on knitting something I've wanted to knit because I'm afraid to do it. I'm so happy with the way this is turning out. I absolutely love it and I am so glad I jumped in and I did something that was out of my comfort zone. So here it is again and I just, like I said, I can't say enough good things about it. It is nice and soft and squishy and I bet you it'll be super warm this winter and it matches my Tecumseh sweater so even better. So uh, that is it for all of my uh, knitting. So let me jump into sewing. So I have a few finished product projects that I finished back in August. I haven't really done a whole, like I said, there hasn't been a whole lot of time for crafting with trying to figure out schedules. So a lot of this stuff I've done in August. The cross stitching is something new for whatever reason. I'm at the end of the night when I'm too tired to really sit down and do brioche knitting where I have to think about it. For whatever reason, the cross stitching seems to be perfect at night. So I haven't done any sewing so far in September, but let me show you what I had finished in um, August. So the first thing is I knit this skirt and this is just a plain knit fold over skirt. This is a sim simplicity pattern. It is the 1616. Anyone else have issues getting their patterns back in the envelopes when they're done? So I did a, but then I did a shorter version of it. I didn't want it as short as what E was, so I kind of adjusted the hem of the skirt so it's a little bit longer. And this is nice, flowy, soft fabric. I had picked up at fabric.com and I don't remember what the brand was, but I love the way this fits. It is super comfortable. It is a little bit thin, so I do have to wear a slip under it, but that's okay. And it does wrinkle 
easily as you can as you can see but I love the way it came out and there are going to be a ton of these skirts because it was super simple four pieces it was sewed within an hour love the pattern and super fast and then the other two things I have to show you are both Lark t-shirts by Grayline Studios in the first one in my last podcast I was wearing the black and white version of this and now I have the navy and white version and again I love uh, the way these came out I did do the two needle double hem I'm hoping you can see that fairly well um, on both the arms and the hem of the shirt and again love the way this came out I did fairly well matching up the seams on the sides and that wasn't on purpose but it ended up working out well anyways and then I did sew another Lark t-shirt now this one I do have to fix the sleeves on so I did the scoop neck version here let me get the and for whatever reason the sleeves bell out just a little bit so I need to I haven't even trimmed the hem on, on the sleeve I'm gonna take the hem apart and I'm just going to kind of pinch it in so that they don't bell out the way they do other than that I love the way this came out I love the color and the material I used for this and I know there's a plum colored material on fabric.com as well so I'd like to pick that up for another t-shirt but I have a ton of projects sewing projects set aside that I have to do so purchasing more fabric right now is out my mom gave me a whole bunch of fabric she had had from when she used to sew clothes so I've got plenty to keep me busy for a long time without having to purchase anything new that same with knitting I have enough yarn to keep me very busy for a long time so I'm trying not to buy a whole lot but I am working on one more sewing pattern and I wanted to just share it with you and I'm doing it simplicity 8688 and I am doing version C and I have all the material cut out and I have some of the top part done on it and I just I'm knitting it out, knitting it, I'm not knitting, I am sewing it out of some material I had gotten on sale at Joanne Fabrics. Um, it was on sale for 70% off and I thought it was the perfect fall color. So I am working on that. So hopefully next time I podcast, I will be able to share that dress with you. That is all I have for sewing. So as far as cross stitching goes, I have a couple finished objects for that. So the first one is my younger son is redoing his bedroom in a Harry Potter theme. And we had um, picked up some Harry Potter sheets for him for his birthday. His birthday was over, over Labor Day weekend. And then we picked up some prints as well. And then I made this cross stitch for him. So this was the first cross stitch I've ever done. And there is a mistake and I'm hoping you can't see it too badly. And I'm not gonna point it out to you just in case you don't see it. But he absolutely loves it. So that's hanging up in his room. And I don't remember, I've been getting my patterns off of Etsy. And I don't remember the shop, but I will put it down below on what shop I picked up that pattern for, as well as this next finished object. And I absolutely love this little fox cross stitch that says for fox sakes. There is a dog walking by the house and my dog doesn't like it. Every time a dog walks by, he needs to bark at it. So sorry about that. Anyways, I just finished this this week and I finished it with, this is a bias tape in a Liberty of London fabric that I bought off of Etsy and I'm going to hang this up in my kitchen. And then that's it for my finished cross stitching projects and then I did start a new one. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna show you the pattern because this probably looks like absolutely nothing right now. I started this last night, but I am doing the Om symbol. It's a yoga symbol. And this is by uh, Galaborn Patterns. And again, I'll link the Etsy store below where I got this pattern from. So I just started that and that is it for cross stitching. There is a Halloween one that I may start on. I'm all by myself this weekend so I may sit down and watch Hocus Pocus and start on that one. So as far as stash enhancements go, I've been relatively good. I haven't purchased any yarn. I haven't purchased any fabric. Um, I did purchase some floss and eight of cloth for the cross stitching, but I'm not going to share. That's kind of boring to show, so I'm not going to share that with you. However, today I did end up going to Michael's and I picked up Interweave's gift magazine. And I picked up specifically because I fell in love with I'm hoping you can see it, this wrap here. And I don't know why a lot of the times their pictures, they put a dark knit against a dark wall. So I'm hoping you can see it, but I just, I love that plum color with those cables. And then it has a lot of beautiful hats and mittens and fingerless gloves. Like I love those mittens. And then there's a hat and mitten combination that I absolutely love as well. So it's October. It's probably about time I start doing some of the gift knits. I'm not going to do a whole lot. I'm going to hopefully do another sweater for my niece. And I'm working on crocheting a blanket for my older niece. So other than that, I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot of gift knitting this year. I find there's too much pressure and I always wait to the last minute. I did that last year where I did like four fingerless gloves, a pair of mittens and everything all at once. And I'll probably end up doing that as well because I am a procrastinator and I always wait to the last minute to do things. I did the hat too for my older son. The day I started that on Christmas Eve and had it done just in time. I will never learn my lesson when it comes to that. So anyways, that is all of the crafting things that I have going on. And like I said, there's just been a whole lot of nothing going on in my life. I've, like I said, we've started school. We've got Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts and soccer. And that's about it. This weekend is Columbus Day weekend. And actually my husband and my two boys are away for the whole weekend camping down on Cape Cod. So they are doing that. So I'm doing dinner with friends tonight. And then I'm going with a friend to Salem. So tomorrow and I am so looking forward to it. I have not been to Salem since my brother and his husband moved to upstate New York. They used to live right in downtown Salem. We used to go all the time and it is just a beautiful town, old homes, lots of rich history, especially here in New England. And I guess October is the time to go if you're gonna go. I'm gonna see there's a cafe there, Gulu Gulu, that I absolutely love. So I'm hoping maybe I'll steer my friend to go there for lunch. And that is about it. I'd like to try dyeing some striped yarn. So I think after this podcast, um, actually while I upload this, I'm hoping to start warping the yarn to try out some sock knitting some, uh, knitting, dyeing some sock yarn. But other than that, it's been really, really low key, but it feels good good to be talking with you guys again and I've really enjoyed this so hopefully in two weeks I'll be back on track and I will go ahead and get another podcast up but thank you so much for joining me and if you enjoyed this podcast subscribe give it a thumbs up and thank you all so much have a great two weeks ahead bye